Um, technically, the bill is still alive. Um, hang on just one second. Let me pull something up on my computer. Um, yes, there was a press release that went out yesterday um, relative to Senate Bill 346, and the three sponsors, Senators Tart, Beringer, and Van Dyne, all issued a statement saying that they've decided not to move forward with the bill and they've coined it as dead. Um, now, technically, if they wanted to revive it, they could. Is Senate Bill 346 dead? Well, technically, as you've just heard, no, it's not. Not according to the state of North Carolina and the way that bills work. And Jeff Tart himself told the Observer that he just wanted to let things calm down for right now. There was a press release, though, and Senate Pro Tem Phil Berger was included in that that says the bill is dead. This is incredibly good news, even though it came out on April Fool's Day. You know, sometimes you got to wonder, are, is our government just trolling us? Um, this is good news. It's time for a high five, a pat on the back. You guys did it because why? You flexed your muscle. You didn't waste your time baking cookies and, and being nicey nice. You went up there and you demanded your rights. If you don't demand your rights, you'll never have them. But I do want to inform you on the way things work in Raleigh. As many of you have stated that you don't really know how politics work or you wish you knew more about the way state politics work, believe me, those in government are watching those threads on Facebook and Facebook groups and social media and if you tell them you don't know how it works, they get a little grin even if they don't show it in the back of their mind. That's why I wanted to bring on former Representative John Rhodes, who brought down the corrupt speaker, Jim Black, when Jim Black was just putting this state through all kinds of misery, his corruption. John Rhodes stood up and said, the people of North Carolina will grab you by the nape of your collar, the belt line of your trousers, and throw you across the state seal and out of this General Assembly. Jim Black went to prison for five years. The establishment primary John Rhodes. That's how government works, okay? The good guys face a primary from the establishment of both parties coming together to get rid of the truth tellers. Here's what a truth teller has to say about what goes on in Raleigh and what you should be concerned about with SB 346. You must get your supporters and, and the people that are in opposition to this bill to have it come up um, for a voting committee and make sure that they make it a, a public documented effort that they lay it upon the table and that it, uh, according to most of the rules that they made is a non-debatable motion uh, and that kills the bill for good and it can't be lying and wait to pop up and do some damage at 3.30 in the morning when they have two hours left in the session and 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 you saw that happen when you were up there in Raleigh you saw bills come up that had been supposedly dead or had gone away nobody's talking about them they bring them up and the next thing you know they're getting passed at 3.30 in the morning yeah the, uh, the folks would bring them out onto the floor the speaker or the leader of the chamber would say such and such a bill will uh, be recognized now and uh, it will be recognized for immediate consideration. Nobody may have even read what's in the bill. It might be 3.30 in the morning. Um, and uh, this, was, uh, this was just something that was very common that was done. I just want to, I want to clarify from folks that nothing is dead at Raleigh, regardless of what they tell you. An issue, a bill is not dead. If they want it, they're going to get it, and they will wait till next session to get it or whatnot. But anybody that tells you, oh, this is, this is, bill is dead, uh, no, they just kind of hit it in the other broom closet where you don't know it's tied out, ticking like a time bomb, ready to do some damage to the public. 
And, and why would they do that? Why would they tell people that something is dead when it's obviously still alive? Well, it's obvious, but what, for more of these more controversial bills, they realize that the public is starting to pay attention. They realize that they've got an acetylene torch on their left cheek, and they're concerned about the heat in the kitchen. So they want to try to turn down the uh, turn down the thermostat just a little bit. So what they will do is they'll they will um, you know kind of redirect the kitchen to something else while they kind of hide this bill and and, and bring it up later. Do they try, is, is this an effort, is this an attempt to try to get people to stop paying attention to an issue there's a lot of passion about? Uh, absolutely. What will happen is when there's too much attention going to the bill, they'll try to, they'll try to diffuse the situation by saying, nothing to see here, folks, you can all go home, nothing to see here, everything's fine, we've got it under control, uh, and they will try to... Uh, you know, diffuse the situation, try to take some of the public light off of what they're doing uh, by saying, you know, oh, this bill is going to kill, this bill is no longer effective or whatnot. Well, no, nothing's dead at all. It, it can always be revived. And that's a sad reality, is it not, folks? The truth is you've got to stay vigilant. You killed this bill for the most part. Technically, it's not dead. But you, we've got to this this position that we're in. I'm amazed. I want to pat you guys on the back. I want to give you a high five. But if you quit now, what do you think is going to happen? Maybe a vote at three in the morning, something like that? How could the bill actually be killed? Well, I wanted to bring up Nicole Revels so that she could explain to you some of the rules that were passed for this session so that you could educate your friends and your family about why the bill isn't dead and how we could possibly still kill it. So, looking at the rules of the Senate, and this is this can be found in Senate Bill 1, which was passed already, the rules. Rule 46 states, Unfavorable report by committee. All bills reported unfavorably by the committee to which they were referred shall lie upon the table, but may be taken from the table and placed upon the calendar by a two-thirds vote of the membership of the Senate present and voting. So essentially, once a bill is referred to committee, if they give it an unfavorable report, voting it down, then it is, what they say, shall lie upon the table, meaning that they can't, if postponed for another time, but it would take two-thirds of vote in order to bring it back up at that later time. So that would be a tremendous hurdle in order to overcome. So basically, if they vote it down, then they would have quite a lot of obstacles in order to be able to bring it back up. And also, the other thing about needing it um, voted down is that Rule 53... Says, let me see if that's the right place. Yes, Rule 50 after a bill has been tabled or has failed to pass on any of its readings, the content of such bill or the principal provisions of its subject matter shall not be embodied in any other measure. So once that is tabled, as was outlined in Rule 46, they can't take the contents of the bill and just slip them in somewhere else. And that's a real critical point right there, because as of right now, they can use this bill elsewhere. They could even bring this bill back up uh, out of committee. It wouldn't even take a two. It wouldn't take a two thirds vote right now. Am I correct? That's right. They could just place it on the calendar for hearing down the road. But also, as of right now, with that bill still being live, that's hard. Could you a committee substitute? to that bill where he just replaces the language with something else healthcare related. It, his mentality that has been demonstrated relating to the government's role in our health care does not instill in me a feeling of confidence that he needs to be doing anything related to our health care. So this bill needs to die so that he cannot substitute it with other language, amend it, bring it up down the road, put it in another bill, any of those things. 
So listen, folks, you've got the ability, you've got the power, the ball's in your court. You want this bill laid on the table? It will be. You just stay vigilant. But let's say we can wait it out for a slow death that we, have to, we will have to worry the entire time until the session is over. As long as they're in Raleigh, um, we will have to worry about this bill being passed as is or parts of it stuffed into another bill. Um, that can all happen. And guess what? If they were able to do that in the middle of the night, there would be some folks that would get some big campaign contributions, maybe even job offers out of it. Million dollars a year. They only make 22000 up in Raleigh. People can be bought. So it's your choice. Stay vigilant. Make sure that this issue doesn't go away until it's laid on the table or until the session is over. But you're going to have to pay attention the entire time. As you've heard, this is the way things work. You know, and as John Rhodes, who has told me, and some other former representatives, they said, you know, Chuck, the thing that they wished they had had back when they were serving is things like this, YouTube videos, uh, independent media. Because if they would have had that, they could have not had to bear the brunt of what these mainstream media newspapers and stuff that were all in favor of what Jeff Tart was doing. Who won? Grassroots, independent, organic, you guys, we won. We won the issue, not the money, not the power. And that's what can happen. That's what can happen with every other issue that's important to you out there. So support independent media, Daily Haymaker, myself, others. Because if there is light shined on the darkness, we will bring more folks into our ranks. And in the end, nothing's really going to change until we start sending people like John Rhodes back up to Raleigh and sending people like Jeff Tart. Back to Cornelius.